Cameron Dabney and as well as number 25, Gabe Patterson, a senior at six foot three. For the Lansing Lions, this is a similar five that we saw last night. It'll be number one, Isaiah Gree at guard. Another guard will be number 22, Cameron Decker, a 6'2 senior. Number 25, Lucas Mine, a junior at 5'10, will also get the start. He's the other guard. And down low, they'll have number 32, Chris Jones, and number 44, Mike Miller. Yeah, and one of the things I definitely want to see is, uh, especially from Greer tonight, I mean, he definitely struggled to, to, to begin the game yesterday. Um, I believe he had missed about four threes in a row. Um, you, that's something you definitely don't want. So if he can get off to a good start, good positive start, getting good quality shot selection, I think that will really bode well for this team today. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what the Lions do going against back-to-back -back nights. Like you said, Lions advanced to 3-0 and on the year. Last night, uh, to for uh, Free State High, they are 2-0 and on the year as well. They are led by head coach Chuck Law, and the Lions are led by head coach Rod Briggs. I'd like to get another win here tonight. It'll be Gabe Patterson as well as Chris Jones doing the jump. Lansing will be in their road black uniforms. Firebirds will be in their home white, and the win, and the tip is won by the Lions. It'll work from right to left. It'll be mine. Hands it off to Decker. Left wing in the corner. Gets a screen by Jones. Looking down low. Little slip screen for Jones. Battle for the ball underneath. And it's going to go out of bounds. It'll stay at this end of the floor with the Lions. Yeah, and one of the things I'm definitely looking at right now is Chris Jones, you know, get the ball in the paint. Bobbled it around Billy a little bit. He had those issues last night at, at, at Topeka Seaman. So that's one thing. If they're going to be successful on the inside, that's one of the keys. He has to keep the ball uh, he has to keep the ball safe and then uh, let it bobble around. Now it's going to be a tip pass by number 14, and Cameron Dabney drives up, takes a shot, and he's going to travel with it. The shot, or is a shot fake by Cameron Dabney, the 6'9 senior. Yeah, his foot just simply slipped and could not uh, contain it. He was thinking shot first, I uh, didn't get his feet set, and that was the that was the uh, end cause of that. Correction, the 6-foot senior. Give him a little nine extra inches <laughs> than what he actually deserves. Now it'll be Green left wing and he stepped on the sideline. Can't do that. And this is kind of a similar start to yesterday, even though it was about, I want to say, it was almost what three, four minutes until somebody scored in the uh, in the in the first game. But uh, both teams making mistakes, playing really uh, playing sloppy very early. 7:20 left to go, 0-0 zero, zero to your score. Firebird ball. Sean Knight will bring it up, drives on the lane, up and under, puts up a shot, no good. It's going to go out of bounds, and it'll stay with the birds. Yeah, that was just a great move, kind of slice in the middle. Little fella out there, one of the smallest guys on the court, you know, doing some damage. But uh, especially on this, uh, especially defensively, you know, if if, uh, if Lansing can stay in the post really well, you know, they do have the height advantage. Dabney tries a 15-footer and is on the board. Two to nothing in your score. Firebird. And out of the lion ball, working right to left. Miller up top, waiting for it. Hands it off to Decker. Decker, right-handed dribble, works left wing now. Up to Mine. Mine kick quickly back out to Decker. Thought about a three. 6.47 left to go. Battling for position down low is Jones. Quickly out to Decker. Three on the way. No good. Rebound. Brett France underneath. And it'll be Firebird ball, working left to right. Now up top, it'll be Knight. Knight and left chain of dribble. Kicks it off the self outside the three line. No good. Battle for the self. Gets his own rebound. Puts it up. Can't get it. Rebound Lions underneath. Two to nothing your score in favor of the Firebirds here in the early going. 6.22 left to go. Now it'll be Green. Left wing. Puts the ball over his head. Hands it down to Jones. Quickly double teamed as Jones up and under. And he's going to get fouled. Let's see who they got. Yeah, could easily call the travel right there. But once again, you know, just... Um, having trouble trying to corral that ball in the post. It'll go against Gabe Patterson. That'll be his first personal foul, first team foul for the Firebirds. 6.14 left to go. Jones's first one on its way. Rims in and out. So Lansing, much like last night, having trouble getting on the board early. Second one by Jones. Benzini's up and over. Nothing but the bottom of the net. He's got one. Chris Jones, the first one on the scoreboard so far for the Lions. Lions will show a little bit of a full court press here now as Sean Knighton barely gets it in. Knighton gathers himself and now will work left to right. Gets, he gets across the timeline. Guarded by Mine. Wanted a screen by Patterson. Didn't have it. 
Now self right wing, right handed dribble, looking down low, doesn't have anything, kicks it back out to Patterson, up and under move, down to Dabney, no good, Patterson gets it on the green block and it goes out of bounds, and will stay with the Firebirds at this end of the floor. And that's just great interior your defense right there by the lines, I mean, just getting the blocks, uh, you know, a bend but don't break, and they you know, got two blocks out of that. Lions had a 61 to 50 win last night over Seaman, now we have a travel by Dabney down low. Senior with another turnover. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're a senior, no matter if it's college or high school, when your senior is making mistakes like that, that is not uh, that, that is not great basketball IQ. Well, it'll be Lion Ball now working right to the left, down two to one, five forty one left to go, first period. Three left wing, guarded by France. Green gonna put up a three on its way, no good, rims in and out, taken by Self. Self left handed dribble ahead the floor to Dabney. Puts up a 12 footer on its way. Hits off the back iron. No good. Going the other way for the Lions. Yeah. In that case, you just definitely just want to take it to the rack. Get a foul. You know, get the layup. You just get some type of contact. Either way, you know, pulling up for the J was just a little. It kind of rushed that one. With all these bricks, these two teams could build a new gym. 5 <laughs> 11 left to go first period. Three with it. Backs it out top. Trying to set things up. 2 to 1 your score. Mine out top. Slow or Dabney got a garden. Gree has it now. Left wing guarded by Self. Between the legs is Gree. Hands it off to Mine. Mine looking down low. Gets a screen by Miller. Right handed dribble. Trying to get into the paint. Hands it off to Jones down low. Up and under. No good. Rebound underneath. That'll go for the Firebirds. Well, the pass was a good idea. The execution was just bad. <laughs> Grant's 12 footer. He gets the bucket and on the board. 4 to 1 your score. As Brett France gets an early two pointers. Yeah, I, uh, like 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 my coach used to say, I like the beginning of the movie, hate the ending. Agree, almost lost it right there. 4:25 left to go. Decker left wing now gets his screen on the right elbow by Miller. Back out to Gree, right wing tries a three, no good. Rebound Miller underneath and on the putback attempt, no. Taken away by the Firebirds, working left to right. Oh. Here comes Self on the transition. Stotts puts up a shot on its way. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Tyler Self for two, and he gets his first two points of the night. And that is just poor transition defense. I mean, they're obviously faster and more athletic. Uh, the, the lines are more faster and they're more athletic, but I mean, just nobody getting down the floor. I mean, the Firebirds, every time they're just inbound the ball, you have Tyler Self, you know, no offense against him, but he's not the quickest guy on the floor, and he had two open shots. This one was a little closer, but the last one, you know, had a nice little mid-range jumper where he could have easily just gone to the basket, and if he had a little more height on, maybe dunked it. We're starting to see things tip in the Firebirds' favor. Remember, we saw this same story last night against Seaman. Lansing fell behind early, trailed the entire first half, and then finally turned on the Jets in the second period. 4-0-4, left to go, first period, 6-1 to one your score. Lions are without a field goal. They'll bring it up, working right to left. I mean Dante Gibson as he brings it across the timeline. 5-8 sophomore. 2-3 zone, this time for the Firebirds. Entry pass down low to Jones, up and under, no good, too hard. And now it's going the other way for the Firebirds. Ahead the floor as Dabney gets it out to France. France, and was he pushed? And yeah, he might have got Lucas Nine. Yeah, we're going to get a push on the baseline. But going back to that last possession for the Lansing Lions, um, I'm going to use a little football terminology with the Heisman Trophy going on tonight. The red zone opportunities, i.e. the points in the paint, they're about 0 for 5 right now in opportunities. Self left hand a dribble, right elbow, gets it down low to Patterson, dipsy do for two. It's Gabe Patterson, the 6'3 senior. He finally gets on the board. Robbie Lyons ball, working right to left. Cleo Bailey now with it, right hand a dribble, kicks it out to Gibson. Long three on its way, nothing but the bottom of the net. Dante Gibson for three. And that's one of those three pointers that the coach says, no, 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 okay, okay, okay. Now go play some defense. He gets his first bucket of the night. So 3 10 left to go, first period. Firebird ball, eight to four year score. Knight gets a screen by Patterson, a down low to Patterson, he's going to block, battle for it, down low left wing, he comes up with the ball. 2.57 left to go, now it'll be France, outside the three-point line, dives in, 12-footer on its way, tip, rebound, Khalil Bainley underneath, and he throws it off Gabe Patterson, but they're going to say it stays with the Firebirds. And it bounced, it, he threw it off of him, and then just basically just went off his leg. Uh, in a situation like that, that's the last thing you want. 
um, happening, especially, I mean, just, and it's so dangerous when, when guys try and throw it off, you know, like we saw last time, we actually hit somebody in the stands, but um, we can have that uh, instance where it does just bounce off your leg, that's never, never good. 2.49 left to go, Logan Bannister is checked in for the Firebirds. Now Blake Linzo drives, he traveled with it. Can't do that, can you? No, no, not at all. And, and really the scoring chances right now for both teams. They've kind of, you know, shot themselves in the foot a little bit. Uh, I mean, this game could be, you know, in the teens right now, but we're nearing the end of the first quarter, and the score is 8-4. Eight 8-4 eight your score, 2.39 left to go, line ball. Eddie Hunt has also checked in for the Lions. He gave him some good minutes last night. Gibson brings it up, closely guarded by Blake Winslow. Now down low, trying to get it to Jones, and he caught it up. Firebird ball going the other way. Left to right now. Knight drives into the lane. Too soft. It's going to be rebounded by the Lions. 2.15 left to go. Now Decker, other side of the floor. Hand off down low to Jones, and we have a charge. Wow. Call. And that was a great defensive Decker. play. I mean, basically raced them down the court, got in position just in time, gets, gets the charge, and, you know, <laughs> once again, a red zone opportunity <laughs> goes uh, goes astray. Yeah, I know. 2.13 left to go, first period. Your score here on 810varsity.com, 8 to 4 in favor of the home team on the scoreboard. Lawrence Free State. Winslow hand it, and he'll swing. He'll sling it off to Kyle McFarland. McFarland, right-handed dribble, gets it up top to Bannister. Around the horn they go to Knight. Knight, a hip and a hop, and he hands it off down low. It's going to be stolen away by the Lions. Here comes Bailey, right-handed dribble, looking to score up and over, and the charge is called. Uh, on that one, no, he tried to go around him, but he was there in time. But still, that's a judgment call. The official may have had a better look than we do, but he... There, there was an effort, so he tries to go around him, and in that case, you would be calling the block. Bailey picks up his first personal foul on the day. Number 22, Wilson Hack will also check in for the Firebirds. That'll be Firebird ball now, as Hack brings it up on the left wing, guarded by Gibson. Finds a streaking McFarland, 12 footer on its way, no good. Battle for the rebound underneath, and it's going to go off Logan Bannister, the 6 1 junior. The Firebirds have some experience, don't they? Yeah, they definitely do, and you know, it, it's going to be tested uh, tonight, especially against a team again, like Lansing, who is really one of the uh, top contenders for the 5A state title. Oh, indeed, they are. Now Gibson brings it off, swings it off to mine, left wing, guarded by Winslow. Line back up top, hit around the horn they go, and it'll be Gibson left wing. Gibson quickly, now double teamed to the corner, gets it over to Hunt. Hunt down low to Jones, up and under. He gets the bucket and gets on the board. And I love the ball movement on that, the rotation, everybody getting in space, and everybody creating room for each other. That was just a great job by the Lions. Chris Jones now has three on the day. So here comes France, gets a screen by Bannister. Down low they go to Winslow, almost had it tipped off. 103 left to go in the period. Bannister tries a 15-footer, and he walked with it before he shot it. Isaiah Green will also check in. He replaces number 23, Khalil Bailey. Bailey gave him some good minutes last night as well. Yeah, definitely. And that was one of the things that really, uh, especially in that third quarter when they really started to pull away, he was one of the key, uh, he was one of the key cogs um, and, and one of the key reasons why that happened. Indeed he was. 58 seconds left to go on the clock. Lions have a chance to really milk some time. Man-to-man -man defense this time for the Firebirds. Gets him, gets a screen by Jones. Up top now to Miller. Miller will hand it off to Grease. Still man-to-man -man defense for the Firebirds. Now Gibson down low to Jones. A hip and a hop, and he puts it up, and he got the bucket. And uh, this crowd, and we talked about this during pregame, it's like a Lansing home game in here. These these fans that come out, you see the red and black all over the place. It feels like Lawrence High School is in here. Um, but, I mean, that was just a great job. You know, they, they're they moving the ball inside. Guys are facing up to the basket. I mean, this is just a great, uh, you know, great two-ball drill or two-man, you know, passing drills that they're uh, putting up right now. Chris Jones gets the bucket and goes to the line for the extra one. This one too strong as it rims in and out. 39 seconds now left to go. Sean Knighton brings it up, working left to right. 
Right-handed dribble guarded by Gibson. Knighton gets it in the lane, and he costs it up. Going the other way for the Lions. Here comes Mine, working right to the left, up and under. He gets the bucket, and now the Lions have their first lead of the day. And this is where Lawrence Free State needs to slow it down right now. Two, and there's too much, you know, one-on-one going on. And they, they, that'll work. <laughs> Dabney gets the bucket and one. He'll go to the line for an extra chance as Cameron Decker sets to check in for the Lions. Yeah, but, but going back really to the transition basket, they were working really well when when, when the Lions weren't doing anything. They were just kind of, you know, going laissez-faire down the sideline. But, you know, they picked up their intensity a little bit. So Lawrence Free State has to... You know, it has to combat that, whether it's, you know, slowing down possessions, playing a lot smarter. They definitely need to do that because uh, the Lions have grabbed control of this game despite it being tied. Under 10 seconds left to go as we tick under five. Decker almost caught it up left wing, gets it into Miller. Miller streaks down low, doesn't look at the clock. Mine now puts up a desperation heave. No good. And at the end of the first period, we have a tie ball game at 10 all, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and really the first about, you could say, first six minutes, of the game, you know, Lawrence Free State was in control, and all of a sudden, the last two minutes, and like we, like I just said, despite being tied, you'd have thought that uh, th- that the Lions had just gone on, you know, on a 10-0 run. It seemed like, but no, it was just a few points in a row, and all of a sudden, they've grabbed control of this game, and Lawrence uh, Free State's looking a little shaky. At the end of the first period, your score here on 810varsity.com, 10 to 10. Our leading scorers are Chris Jones with five points for the Lions and Cameron Dabby with four on two made field goal attempts. Yeah, and, and one of the things I am impressed by so far with Lawrence Free State is the fact that uh, even though Lansing is the better team despite, you know, being down a class level, these guys, they were taking their best shot. I mean, and one of the things that we talked about last night that we were really impressed with was the crowd. Um, so far, it, like I said, it seems like a Lansing home game. I mean, I want these Lawrence Free State students to get up, you know, get loud. You know, you got a, you got a one of the state's top teams in the in the sixth ranked team in the uh, eight ten uh, eight ten varsity top twenty five poll. Yeah, make some noise. I mean, this is a big game for you guys. Indeed, it is. Ten to ten, your score. Um, attendance throughout this gym has been sparse now. Yeah, but they did have a uh, have the JV game going on um, in the other gym, so that could uh, that could have something to do with that. But still, like when we came in here, it seemed like it was all Lansing people. Now here comes mine, hands it off to Miller, tries to put up a shot, and he's fouled. And I think they call a charge. Yeah, they call a charge on that, and nobody was in control on that. I would have just let that one go, uh, but he didn't even have control of the ball. And then all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> a guy, uh, he just stepped in there, and, you know, Mike Miller couldn't do anything about it. It was just a collision. Now his second foul of the day, and both personal fouls so far for the Lions. That's something they got to watch. The Lions have gone to a 2-3 zone now. Self now gets it into France, kicks it out to Knight, and 15-footer from the left elbow on the way. No good. Rebound underneath this Jones as he rips it down ferociously. Ahead the floor to Green, he almost coughed it up. 7.22 yeah. <laughs> left to go, 10-10 to 10 still the score. Mine up top, overhead pass to Green now on the left wing. Green makes a hip and a hop and makes a move. Back up top to Mine, 15-footer on its way, no good. Battle underneath, and Jones went out of bounds with it. It'll go to the Firebirds. Yeah, and they were looking for a push on that call, and uh, Coach Briggs is not happy with the stripes right now. Indeed he's not. 7-9 left to go, first period. Neither team has scored here in the second quarter. One of the things I'm looking at right now, especially on the inside, uh, you know, there's got to be some movement. The guys have to start setting screens on the inside well, well, like they were doing early on. Dabney hands it off to Knight and drives into the lane. Nice little floater, too strong. Battle for the rebound underneath, and the Firebirds come away with itself. Going to try a three. Let's wait. Yes. And you know what? I love the socks. I mean, the striped socks, and that also along with the three. But uh, that was just a great job of, uh, of ball movement, all, um, which was a sloppy possession. Self has five now. Jones going to swing it off top to Young. Young's just checked in. Young atop to mine. 
triple threat position. Swings it over to Decker, left wing. Gets a screen now by Gree. A head screen on the slip screen. Three on the way. Too strong as it hits off the back iron. Jones picks up the garbage, though, and puts it in. Yeah, that was just a great job of, you know, like I said, getting the garbage and putting it back in the basket. And, you know, you have to love a guy, especially in the post, that doesn't give up on a possession like that. Jones has seven now. Knighton brings it up, working left to right. Gets it down to France, 12-footer on its way from the corner. No good. Patterson battling for the rebound. And head coach Rod Briggs wanted him over the back, over the back call, and he didn't get it. And he will, actually, he will get it. They, they, they will flip the possession right there, but Coach Briggs is not happy. You can just definitely tell uh, he is uh, he, he knows that they should be up by, by a lot more and I mean they have they've been dominating on the boards it's just the you know simple mistakes that mess is killing them right now Dante Gibson will bring it up the timeline working right to left as he walks it up 548 left to go Gibson now left wing still not I think it's a 1-3-1 one, one zone for the Firebirds as now Jones drives into the lane and he gets, gets fouled, and I think they got Kim and Gabby the senior. Yep, they did get him, but one of the things I'm impressed by with Jones right now is, um, you know, we talked about last night, yeah, he was struggling to, uh, to, to, to establish himself in the post, and even tonight he was struggling a little bit, but he's really turned it on in about the last quarter and a half. Indeed he was. Jones's first one is up and no good. They'll have a chance at another one now. Chris Jones toes the safety, charity stripe, takes a couple of dribbles, bends the knees, and puts it through. He gets another bucket. He has eight now. Got three in this period alone. 5.41 left to go, second quarter, 13 to 13, your score. Brett Prince, a 6'1 senior, brings it up. Takes the hip and a hop at the three point line, now hands it off. Dabney drives in, 12 footer on its way, and he's fouled. By Chris Jones. And not not a smart play at all. I mean, just hand if, if his hands go straight up, he may get a deflection on there or may just kind of you know, disrupt the, uh, the, the the path of the ball. But on that play, just just not just don't slap it. <laughs> That's Jones's first personal foul of the day. Dabney bends the knees, composes himself, and the first one rims in and out. Yeah, I mean, you can tell he's got the athleticism. He can jump up there. Um, it's just that he's kind of harnessing the athletic uh, the athleticism. 13 to 13, your score. Dabney could put the Firebirds ahead. Composes himself, takes some dribbles, bends the knees, and adds an extra point now. Dabney's got five as well. On the near side will be Grease, swings it over to Gibson. Gibson's got quite a bit of playing time today. Bailey now, overhead throw. Going to find Young. Young around the horn. They go to Gibson. Entry pass down low to uh, Jones, and he gets it to rattle in. He's got 10. He's got three in this period. And Jones splits France ahead the floor to Dabney into the lane, off the screen, no good. Have a foul down low, and I think they got Dabney again. Yep, they sure did, and now it's going to go to Lansing. But one of the things I'm, I'm trying to figure out really what kind of happened in that last, you know, uh, five minutes of game time, including what happened in the first period and last two minutes of that, is uh, the movement. The, the movement from Lawrence Freese, it seems like they're just driving up the ball, uh, and, you know, it's just all one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody's moving without the basketball, and I was really impressed with Lansing last night, and, you know, they're doing that right now. I mean, you set a pick right there, driving inside, and, you know, there's always movement. On at 6-7, makes a move, footer on its way, yes! I'm impressed with this kid. I I mean, I've, I've, I've been impressed with this game all, you know, really... Uh, last night and the you know the and, uh, tonight so far just moving without the basketball. Oh, well, gets his first points of the day and it comes in the second quarter. Self now going to try a three. He's already hit one. Yes, Tyler Self at his second three pointer of the day, the second of this quarter. Ahead the floor to Bailey and he's fouled and I think they either got Brett France or Tyler Self. It looks like they did get uh, Self with that call. Self's first personal foul. On the day, and now to the 16th foul going against the Firebirds. So Cleo Bailey will toe the line, takes a couple of practice dribbles, spins the ball in his hands, bends the knees. This one up and good. Zip tickles the twine. Bailey now at his first point on the day. Can't believe he hasn't gotten any more involved. That's a high score last night. Bailey's second one just short. Rebound. 
Winslow comes up with it. Now France works left to right. Right hand in the dribble, gets into the lane, and he traveled with it as his feet skidded across. Brett France wearing those new Adidas-style shoes where the socks kind of match the shoes, and it looks like he got a couple extra stripes going up and down. I know, very, very classy. I kind of like that. Uh, I saw I, I saw that from UCLA and Michigan. A lot of their players were those in the uh, Mali Invitational. Well, very Kansas, classy look. Kansas is wearing them as well, just down the road from here. Decker now, three triple threat position, swings it out top to Hunt. Hunt, right-handed dribble, waiting for something. Now it'll be mine, looking inside, finds Decker, almost has it poked away. Decker up and under. Gets it to mine, a hip and a hop, puts up a shot, and on the putback, no good, as Young couldn't come up with it. And, uh, Brett France comes away with the rebound. Uh, the Florida Winslow between the legs, sends it up top. 17 to 18, your score in favor of the Lions. Sean Knight and dribbles, now up top to France, 15 footer, no good. Gonna go out of bounds and he'll stay with the Lions. And that's just great rotation on defense, really kind of sealing that play off and. Uh, in, in real, and that's what they've been doing the last few possessions from from Lansing. They've really just kind of sealed off, kind of closed any type of uh, any type of gap or any type of opening that Lawrence can take right now. 319 left to go as mine brings it up, working right to left. Left swing now as he swings it up to Hunt, the 6'7 sophomore. Mine now drives baseline, guarded by Self, finds Hunt underneath. Around the horn they go. Bailey left for a three, no good as it falls out and on the putback. Lucas Mine gets another bucket. Yeah, it's not the shot you wanted on the three-pointer, but that was just a great job by Mine, you know, picking up the garbage and putting it in the basket. Mine now with four points. Sean McKnight and a hip and a hop and up and under, and he gets it. And that was just a great job going inside, you know, kind of evading the contact. I kind of embrace it, but, you know, invade the contact. And Decker tries a three, too strong underneath. Khalil Bingley puts it back up underneath his foul. And that was just a great job. Not the sh Once again, not the shot you wanted on the three-pointer, but Bailey, you know, coming up and, you know, really nobody boxing him out. He just basically went down the floor. He had the ball. It's like, okay, I'll just put it back up. <laughs> Bailey now with three, and they flag Tyler Self with the foul. That's his second one of the day, second of this period. Couple substitutions for the Firebirds as Kyle McFarland will check in as well as uh, Gabe Patterson, the 6'3 senior. Bailey bends the knee, shot on its way, rims in and out, taken away by the Firebird. 22 to 19, your score in favor of the Lions. Firebird ball and now Sean McKnighton makes a move, gets in the lane, and he threw it away. Can't do that. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. That's the story here today. Yeah, for both teams. I mean, really, it started in the beginning with, you know, a, a few fouls and, you know, the, the charges. In mean, this game, and, you know, Coach Briggs is, is definitely upset about it. Uh, this game should be, in even Coach Law, I mean, this game should be in the, in maybe in the mid-30s, not the... Uh, teams in, uh, or not the high teams in uh, low 20s. Both teams undefeated on the year. Bailey almost double team. 2-3 zone this time for the Firebird. Jones backing him down and he's whistled for a foul down low. They're going to get Gabe Patterson his second foul of the day. Patterson just had two points in the first half and he's been quiet here in the second period. Yep. Starting to maybe go asleep a little. Yeah, and, you know, um, especially Lawrence, Lawrence Free State, they need to get things going in a hurry because we saw this last night where, you know, you definitely saw, uh, you saw Speaker Seaman not running at, at, at with, uh, with Lansing like they should, and all of a sudden it just ended up, next thing you know, they're down 8, they're down 10, almost a 20-point game until they close the gap a little bit. Jones is first of the one and one attempt as he gets the front end of that one. Jones now with 11. Has a chance to add some more. Jones gathers himself, puts up the free throw, too strong off the back iron. Battling underneath, and the Firebirds come away with it. As we took under two minutes left to go here, second period. Knighton going against Mine. Overhead pass over to. Uh, number 14 and Dabney, and he traveled with it. Turnover Dabney. Yeah, um, just sloppy possession after sloppy possession right now for the Firebirds. Uh, they had this game in control early on, and all of a sudden they just can't seem to grab the reins again. 
23 to 19 your score 148 left to go second period of play green out guarded by winslow almost ran into banister down low they're going to swing it out to mine three on the way no good decker comes away with a rebound and a putback yeah, Cameron what, Decker finally on the board. Nobody boxing in on that possession. But Decker, you know, just d a good job of getting the basketball and just putting it back in. But once again, nobody blocking out for the Firebirds. Decker's got two. Here comes Sean McKnight and drives into the lane. Left-handed floater, kisses it off the glass, and gets it to fall. Sean McKnight now at four. So here come the Lions. 110 left to go, and this one's going to go off the feet, I believe, of Blake Winslow, the sophomore. And that was just not a good pass right there. Play Young and Dante Gibson will check in for the Lions. They will place Jones as well as Lucas Mine. Chris Jones, a senior at 6'6", leading scorer so far for the Lions with 11 points. Got one foul. The shot too strong. Rebound Firebirds, 25-21, to 21, looking to close the gap now. Entry pass down low to Bannister, looking to do something with it. Hands it off to Knighton. Knighton between the legs, a hip and a hop, and he hands it off. Under a minute now. Firebirds running that Bill Self weave, if you want to call it that. <laughs> Kansas weave. I wonder why. Knighton overhead, 15-footer on the way. Too strong, rebound Gree, and the Lions will take it away. Under 40 seconds left to go. 25-21, to four-point game. As Gibson brings it across the Firebird at midcourt. And this is where you want to get a nice, lengthy possession. You know, you don't have to take two, you don't have to rush a shot. There's no shot clock. Um, if there's open shot, go ahead and take it, but never mind, turn it over. And a steal by Knight, and two on two. Knight and goes into the lane, hits it off the back iron, and we have a what? blocking foul. They're, they're, they're going to call a block on that? I mean, there was some contact, but he just missed the layup. Wow. See, I wish we had the replay on that because literally he went up, uh, the ball hit the bottom of the rim and then there was contact on the way down. Really? You gonna call that? A little too strong. Knighton will toe the line this time. He's got four points on the day. The first of two, too strong as it hits off the back end. Chris Jones will check back in for the Lions as he replaces Clay Young. Knighton needs to get some points here. Knighton shot on its way, right-handed shot, no good. Rebound Lions. Now they got 17 seconds to do something. Dante Gibson will bring it up across the court. Three and a Lions are led by head coach Rod Briggs as he barks out an order. Both teams are undefeated. Want, none of them want to go away. Bailey drives baseline, kicks it out, trying to find Decker, and the clock expires. I don't think they need and, the time. And even, even, even on that possession, uh, you should know late game clock possession. I mean, every team, no matter if you are playing YMCA basketball or even the NBA, every team practices that. And that's just poor execution. Just sad. Terrible. Indeed it is. Your score at the half here on 810varsity.com. We'll have a 10-minute halftime period before we return. 25-21 to 21 in favor of the Lansing Lions. More when we return with the second half action.
Welcome back to 810varsity.com. My name is Aaron Berlin, joined alongside by Andrew Hammond this evening. The Lions currently lead it at the half, 25-21, to 21, as we have about two minutes left to go before the third quarter kick, kicks under or tips underway, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm still, still in football mode, Well, Andrew. you know, speaking of football mode, we do have some breaking news. Yes, we do break news here at 810varsity.com. Uh, the Heisman Trophy was handed out tonight, and it did not go to the Honey Badger. The Honey Badger did not take what he wanted. It was Robert Griffin from Baylor, yes. Well, who's to say he really wanted the Heisman? Oh, it, yeah, there is, <laughs> there, there, there is a greater prize on the line for the Honey Badger. But, yes, Robert Griffin from Baylor, yes. Hey, everybody. Yes, yes, Virginia. Baylor has a Heisman winner. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this in real quick. <laughs> Citizens National Bank has sponsored the Leavenworth Invitational since 1995. Citizens National Bank is a family-owned, independent financial services organization with a strong commitment to the, communi the communities which they serve. Locations with 24-hour ATMs in Leavenworth and Lansing, as well as online banking, Citizens is a proud sponsor of both Leavenworth and Lansing webcasts this season. Citizens National Bank, member FDIC. Hey, everybody. Danny Zek Ford has been a fixture in Leavenworth County for decades. Uh, Derek and D Dustin Zek are the third generation of Zeks serving Leavenworth and Kansas City car shoppers. As Zek Ford in Leavenworth, Kansas, they not only believe in treating every customer special, they practice it as well. The goal is to make you feel comfortable while you are purchasing your new and pre-owned vehicles. Stop by any time at 4501 Main Street or call 800-394-1650. And of course, shop the entire inventory online at 24-7 at dzford.com. Like we said, Lions a leader at the halftime mark, 25-21. to They got off to a shaky start in the first period of play, but just like last night, they turned on the Jets, and it's mostly been fueled by the 11 points off Chris Jones. Yeah, well, definitely. Chris Jones, he struggled a little bit last night, but I do want to talk about really where the game turned. It started uh, about midway through the first quarter, uh, and then really it started to kick into high gear, and the Lions took control about two minutes in the first quarter. Then it just, you know, kind of spread over to the, uh, to the second quarter, but Lawrence Free State is staying in this game due to the Lansing uh, Lions not, you know, really closing this thing out. They've went on runs. I mean, you know, every time they go on a run, the uh, the, the the Firebirds. I was going to call them the Freebirds for a second. No, Leonard Skinner is not playing, but yes, the Firebirds um, have been uh, right behind him every step of the way. Third quarter starts off, and Tyler Self is the leading scorer so far for the Firebirds with eight. See what he can do here in the third quarter of play. Lucas Mine takes it top of the key, swings it off to Gree near side. Gree around the horn, they go to Decker. Decker takes it back over to Gree, right wing. 2-3 zone, this time for the Firebirds, and this one's going to go out of bounds, and it'll stay at the center of the floor with the Lions. 25-21, 7.39, let's go, third quarter of play. Isaiah Gree will inbound it, Lions working left to right. Near side now is Gree, outside the three-point line. Swings it up top to Decker. 7.30 left to go. Lions are working on a 30-second possession. This time inside to Miller. Quickly double team. Tried to hand it off to Jones. Battle for the ball underneath. And Mike Miller throws it up <laughs> as he was falling backwards. Everybody just goes down all That's at the same vacation. time. I know, right? Uh, but one of the one of the things that really one of the things that really confused the uh, the Lions on that play is you could definitely see the zone. Um, looked like a looked like a bit of a two-three zone. You could have called it a, a bit of a box and one. Uh, one of the guys wasn't really in position on that play, but uh, the, you know, once they hit him with that zone, they just kind of stood around like, what do we do? What do we do? Self takes it right-handed dribble, swings it up top to Dabney. Now right, trying to hand it off to Knight and kicks it out to Self. Self right-handed dribble gets it in the lane, back out to Knight. 6:59 left to go. 25-21. Neither team has scored so far in the third period. Self drives, floater with the left hand, no good. Right down underneath by Dabney with a right hand and kisses it off the window and gets it to fall. And nobody there to box out. Dabney just came in and sailed in, takes the ball, had time to, you know, make a move and then put it back up. 6.35 left to go, third quarter of play. Two point lead this time for the Lions as they get. As the Firebirds get on the board first here in the third quarter. Decker takes it right wing, swings it out top to mine. He'll try a three, hits off the front iron. Down low, and we have a flat, we have a foul called. And I think this one's going against the Lions. Yeah, it looks like we do get a push, and I believe. Yeah, Mike Miller, that's his third personal foul of the day. How about Cameron Tabby able to 
snag that board underneath with a foot back, and he's got seven. And Dabney, not the, uh, <laughs> right now, uh, along with, it uh, looks like Sean Knight and the uh, two small guys on the floor, and they're coming in, and they both got rebounds Lions, today. Lions will apply a little bit of pressure as Tyler Self races it across the timeline. So now a steal by the Lions as Clay Young came up with it. Young working, right hand a dribble between the legs. Skip pass over to Decker. Three on the way. Rise and fire. No good. Knighton comes up with it on the air ball. Under six minutes now left to go. Full court pass to France. He's going to try a three from the corner. No. Rebound underneath. Lions takes it. And Clay Young comes away with it. And this is where, if you're the Lions from Lansing, you definitely want to slow down the possession. And the last two possessions were really, really rushed. Had the opportunity Always know where yeah. mine is with those red shoes. Entry pass down low to Jones, and he's got 13 now. And that was just a great play right there. You know, just throwing the ball inside. Good quality shot, putting that one up. That was a great play. He gets the bucket. Now it's a 27-23 advantage for the Hines. Four-point game now. Knighton takes it, right-handed dribble, swings it out to Dabney. Dabney, triple threat position, up top to Self. Self is guarded by Decker. He's done a pretty good job on him so far today. Patterson now right wing, gets a screen. Now Knighton drives it in the lane, too strong. Battle for it underneath. Patterson gets it and gets <laughs> it to roll off the iron and in. And it, it literally just went on the iron and just rolled over. I mean, not the not the cleanest play in the world, but hey, guess what? It'll work. Patterson's got four now, and Mine tried to throw it inside to Jones, but it kicks off Self's feet. It'll stay at this end of the floor with the Lions. 4.58 left to go here. Third quarter of play, Lions ball. One team foul so far for the Lions. They're the only ones to commit a foul so far. Jones takes it, picks up his dribble, and hands it off. Around the horn they go. Bailey to mine up top. Now mine dribbles down low, hands it off to Bailey, and it's going to go out of bounds as Knight got a hand on it. 4.48 left to go, third quarter. The Lions really need a score here. And we now have a two point lead. Entry pass down low to Jones, a hip and a hop, and he goes up and grabs it. Now down low as he tried to get it to Green and go out of bounds, as they say it went off the foot of Kyle McFarland. And not the cleanest play in the world, man. The last two possessions haven't been the cleanest, so one thing you want to do uh, is, get, is get, a, get a nice set play and right then and there, and looks like we have a foul. Looks like, are they going to call that one on Self? No, oh, they got Dabney. No. So Dabney picks up his first personal foul today. 4.42 left to go. Correction is third. I must have missed it somewhere on my scorecard. Now the Lions ball as Young takes it. Right-handed dribble going against Dabney. Almost double teams. He hits it back. Now a steal by Self. One-on-one. -on -one self up and away. Leads it off the glass and in. And Pops has got to love that. He's sitting right across us up there. Uh, his, his father, Bill Self, uh, of course, do we need to explain who he is? <laughs> yeah, his team picked up a pretty big win earlier in the day, didn't they? Yep, they sure did against a, a, good, a solid Ohio State team, a team I think we'll be seeing uh, in the Elite Eight. Lyon thought about taking a three and almost had it tipped away. Loose ball now. It comes away with the Firebirds. Ahead to Florida night and night and one-on-one with Bailey, and he's going to be fouled. Good job by Knight and able to recognize the one-on-one -on -one coverage with Khalil Bailey. Yeah, that was just the you know the last two possessions, really just getting in the passing lane, just you know getting great disruption. Uh, but one of the things that I definitely do want to see out of Lansing uh, is they yeah exactly. I was going to say get some substitution, get some fresh bodies in there, especially um, Eddie Hunt, who's played you know excellent. And in the last uh, last night, and he's played you know really uh, well today. Eddie Hunt's really a guy you're high on, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, the, f the fact that the guys you know around six seven six eight, it it's not it's not it, he's not a starter, but when he comes in, he's going to give you quality minutes, and the kid has great upside. 4:05 left to go, third quarter of play, Lions ball, and the Firebirds have sprinted out and taken a two point lead. Remember, they were down at the half. Bailey now takes it, comes off a screen by Hunt, and I think they're going to whistle Bannister for a foul. And if so, that's his first one of the day. Logan Bannister does get it, his first personal foul of the day. Hey, everybody, whether buying or selling your home, Lisa Reese or Coldwell Banker, really, 
Riley and Sons bring professionalism with honesty, integrity, loyalty, and hard work. Lisa Reese will guide you step-by-step step through the entire process. Call or text at 913-240-6004. Visit online at reese.com. Bailey almost coughs it up. Battle for the ball underneath. The Knighton comes away with it. Here come the Firebirds ahead to Florida South. Let's hand it and lay up too strong. Rebound Hunt down low as he rips it down. That's a man's rebound right there by Eddie Hunt. She was in attack mode. Decker drives other end of the floor. Too strong off the iron. Green almost came up with it. And Bailey, the man who coughed it up, uh, quickly gets the rebound. Now Gibson tries a three. Too strong. Rims in and out. Decker on the put back. No. <laughs> now oh everybody trying to get with it, and oh my, two-on-one break by the Firebirds ahead to Florida South, and he easily hey, leaves it in. You have to call a timeout right here. I mean, you need to get this team under control. They're playing entirely too fast, like I said last night during the Seaman game. They're hydroplaning. They're, they're going too fast, and they just, you know, they're coming out of control quickly. Self now with 12. Hot leading scorer in the game. 2.15 left to go, third quarter. Gibson takes it quickly, double team to Zeddy Hunt. Gibson, 12-footer on its way. No. Rebound Firebirds. And the same thing we talked about last night with the Pika team and that lid on the goal is, you know, it, it's been there for about three or four minutes. And now it's happening to the Lions. They have a foul underneath. 2.34 left to go. Third quarter of play, 31-27. to 27. Lions have got to get something going. If there's one thing I've seen that plagues the Lions every time they're very slow out of the house. Yeah, definitely. And, you know... That is the one knock on this team that I've seen so far. Yeah, I mean, it, and, and they have the ability to knock teams out like we saw last night. And, you know, this Free State team, like we said, they might not be as talented as Lansing and might not be as athletic, but they're definitely giving them their best shot right now. And I'm waiting for the Lions to swing back. We saw it, you know, late in the third quarter uh, last night, so maybe... You know, maybe uh, it's, it was. This was a bit of an omen. Right now, the Firebirds trying to deliver a haymaker. Lansing has to respond. They need something on this possession. Mine brings it across the timeline, working left to right, guarded by Winslow. Up top now is Miller, and a steal by Knighton. Knighton has been pretty good so far for the Firebirds. Just a little five nine senior. He's been a little bit of a spark plug for him. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's got a lot of energy. Uh, some of it's been used negatively tonight, but most of all positive, especially uh, guarding on the perimeter. Lionel inbound it to the right of his own basket. Gets it into Young, and he needs it. No correction, Chris Jones. He's got 15 now. Well, he also needed that after a couple of bad possessions, you know, not getting some rebounds, trying to get his confidence back up. That's, hey, that's the uh, tonic he needs. Every possession has to start going through Jones for the Lions. Now inbound is McFarland trying down low, can't get it, battling Ooh. underneath. And I think Bannister almost fouled him, but Mike Miller was diving for it. And you could have easily called an intentional foul right there. I mean, that was kind of, kind of, in football terms, he was setting the block for him. <laughs> Indeed he was. Mike Miller is a big man at 6'5". <laughs> yeah, 6'5", and uh, I mean, kind of reminds me of a uh, of a small tight end or something like that in the NFL. Just the guy. <laughs> The guy just came back and he just pushed him. I was like, man, whew. Hunt will check back in. 1.15 left to go. Firebirds on top, 31-29. to 29. Lions trying to regain the lead, though. McFarland hands it off to Knighton. Drives in, 12-footer, no good. Now it's going to be France takes it. Baseline, kisses it off the glass, no good. And Hunt rips down the rebound. Here come the Lions. Let's see what they get. Decker thought about a three underneath on the shot attempt, and he gets it to fall. Nice play by Cameron Decker. Yeah, that was just a great job. Kind of hesitated on the three-pointer. He, he definitely loves, um, I think I think Bob Knight would love this kid because he executes the shot fake very well. Yeah, you hate to sound like a broken record, <laughs> but it almost works every time. 31-31 to 31 your score through Decker who tied it up. Now Knighton kicks it out to Bannister, 15-footer on its way, takes the scenic route, but finally <laughs> falls through the rim. I like that one. That was good. I like that. Under a minute left to go here, third period, 33-31, to 31 after Bannister got the nice bucket. And right here, if you're, if you're Lansing, you want a smart possession. You don't want, you don't want to force anything too quickly. 2-3 zone for the Firebirds. Green launches a three on its exactly. way, hits off the left iron, no good. Rips it down to the Firebirds. Knighton comes away with the head to Florida Flance. Three-pointer three on its way. Actually, yes. yeah. Slipped it up. Was that a two? I don't know if his foot was, yeah, his foot was on the line. call it inside. 
to France. What almost was a three was just a two. Lions need a response. Hunt up top, in down to uh, Jones, and he has it stolen away. Firebirds have come out well here in the second half. Ahead, the Florida Knight and Dipsy Doo for two. In the You'd have lane. to call timeout right here. The wheels are falling off. You don't want to play too fast right now. You just want to get a good play, get a nice safe, uh, get, get a nice safe two. 37-31, Jones turnaround, hook shot, no good, and your score at the end of the third period, 37 to 31. It's a big period right there for the Firebirds. Yeah, and we talked about that last two minutes. Somebody's got to grab the momentum, and all of a sudden, you see that it was the uh, the Free State Firebirds. I mean. My goodness, I mean, it seemed like all of a sudden the, what happened to Topeka Seaman last night has happened to this team. I mean, it wasn't, uh, the, the scoring margin wasn't as big, but it's still it's just one of those things where you're like, where did this all go wrong? They were in control. They were doing just fine. And all of a sudden, they're, they're, it seemed like they're lost. Corrections Corporation of America is proud to support the Leavenworth Pioneers webcast. CCA is America's leader in partnership corrections, operating over 60 facilities in nearly half of all the states. Learn more about CCA job opportunities at ccajob.com. You can apply for a rewarding position as a correctional officer and or, or a teacher, just to, to name a few. Your next career could be in corrections with CCA. Visit ccajob.com today. That's ccajob.com. Leather or Lions uh, had a little bit less than a great third quarter, if you want to call it that. They need to find a rhythm here in the fourth, don't they? They need to find something. I mean, whether it is, uh, whether it's a go-to guy or whether it's a collective effort, because the, at, at around 229, we talked about you got to make a run. You got to get that momentum. I mean, it, it seems like this run is much bigger due to the fact that you know, Lansing has just gone completely cold all over the place. Looks right. like we've got a 1-3-1 one, one going on right here. A all bit of a zone, oh, okay. They've, they've switched to it a couple <laughs> times. They've done a 2-3 and a 1-3-1. One, one. Lion ball, they need something out of this possession down six. Well, you definitely do have a mismatch, so if they can, you know, pepper that zone a little bit and work the ball inside, you know, they have the opportunity. Three, too long, back out to Bailey. Bailey skips ahead, and it's going to be stolen away by the Firewoods. Fire, or Firebirds now self with the left wing right handed dribble going against Gree picks up his dribble and now almost has it stolen away now to be Patterson up top and Gree got a hand on it it's going to go out of bounds yeah definitely and on that on that possession right there uh, that's the last thing you wanted for the uh, for the Lions I mean you never throw a skip pass Prince on his takes own. it hands it off to Patterson and Dipsy do for two and that one was too easy 7:15 left to go fourth period 39 to 31 the Firebirds are starting to deliver that haymaker we talked about three thought about a three decided not to hands it off to Decker in the lane nice two for Cameron Decker right now we're gonna get a timeout uh, they wanted a timeout to get something set up Lansing did uh, yeah that I, I wouldn't have called a timeout right there you know play some play a little bit of defense uh, but if they do go and run, then you call timeout. But calling timeout in that situation, that's the wrong move. 39-33. France comes off a screen. 15-footer on its way. No good. Ripped down by Clay Young. He gets another rebound. Line ahead to Florida Decker. Thought about it. Ahead to Gree for three from the corner. Yes! And Isaiah it. Gree for three. He's finally on the board. And kind of held it a little too long, held the uh, held that pose a little too long right there. I'm trying to think to myself, young man, you were down three points right now. Go play some defense. Shooters like to shoot. Now Self thought about it at three, drives in, 12-footer on its way. Left elbow, no good. Patterson rips down the rebound now. Now Knighton with it, right wing, guarded by Mine. Knighton between the legs, ahead the floor, no good, but he's fouled. And let's see what they got on the whistle. There was a little confusion right there for Lansing on that, uh, on that switch on the man-to-man -man defense. We're going to get Lucas Mine, his first personal foul on the day. Fifth team foul for the Lions. Knighton will toe the line, takes a couple of dribbles, spins the ball in his hand, bends the knees, and the first one on its way, rims in. Again, danced around the rim a little bit, and it finally went in. 6.05 left to go, fourth period. Four-point advantage for the Fire Knighton's second one on its way, dribbles it around two too strong off the back iron, and that's something that's going to make a coach mad, isn't it? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's the last thing you want to do, not boxing out, 
especially off that miss. Hine races it across the timeline. Left-handed dribble inside, trying to get it to Gree on the bounce pass, but he couldn't get it there in time. You, you have a team that's going to get a switch in on a man-to-man, -man, and you want to throw a pass that, you know, maybe uh, it felt like a centimeter, you know, wide window. Wrong, wrong uh, play right there. Lions are going to try and speed things up with a full-court press. Now Self brings it up, right-handed dribble, almost splits Gree. Swings it off to Knight, Knight with it, left wing. And now Gree tips it away. Gree one-on-one -on -one with Self ahead the floor. Too strong, gets his own rebound and the putback, and he got it. Well, kind of showboating right there. Kind of kept looking back at Self as he was going up to the basket. And, you know, I'm sorry, that's what he gets for missing that. Well, I think he was a little paranoid at how close Self was. Tyler Self will bring it up, working right to left, and now we have a timeout free state. And that's a big one. Hey, everybody, get all your hometown and Leavenworth County news with the Leavenworth Times. Call for a subscription today or visit LeavenworthTimes.com. The Leavenworth Times covers Leavenworth, Lansing, Easton, and the rest of Leavenworth County. And the Leavenworth Times is partnered with 810 Varsity. Hey, that's us, making it easier for all fans and families of Leavenworth and Lansing High Sports to watch games online. Visit the LeavenworthTimes.com today. There our situation here at Lawrence Free State High, 40 to 38, with five minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Fourth quarter of play. Lions team leaders now are on the floor trying to ramp up their crowd. And the Lions faithful traveled quite well tonight, didn't they? Yeah, and like we said in the early in the early going, it seems like it's a Lansing home game with all the uh, black and white in the, or black and red in the crowd. But you know, since we are in a Sunflower League arena, it does feel like, and with a team that starts with an L that has Lions as the mascot, <laughs> it feels like it's the Lawrence Lions. Indeed, um, it does. Here couple of celebrities in the stands today. Yeah. I already mentioned Bill Self watching his son Tyler Self. Mm -hmm. He's done pretty well to make old Pops happy today. Yeah, yeah, he, he has. So it looks like hopefully, you know, if the score holds up in the uh, Firebirds' favor, uh, the Self happy will be 2-0 uh, today. But also we have Wayne Simeon in the crowd. I uh, saw him in the uh, KU blue track suit. Uh, but, uh, you know, going back to Self, that was a heck of a game that they had today against Ohio State. And the, uh, the, that effort in the second half, kind of fighting off a pesky Ohio State team. And, and now the only problem is they're going to be without their senior guard yeah. and Tayshawn Taylor for two to four weeks, torn meniscus. And really, going to undergo surgery tomorrow night. Yeah, and this is where the depth is really going to be tested for uh, Coach Self and the Jayhawks. So Self will inbound against with the France drive baseline and a block. Chris Jones came up with a monster block. 40 to 38, your score. Lions have a chance to tie now. Line takes it coast to coast. Kiss it out to Gree. Thought about a three, decided not to. Now Bailey with it overhead pass to Gree. Mine in the corner for three. No, rims in and out. Jones comes up with a rebound on the putback and one. Wow. Great offensive possession. Even though they didn't get the shots they wanted, it was not giving up on the play. And like I said, it seems like it's, this, is a, this is a Lansing home game. I mean, you have both sides of the bleachers in black and red. It's got a good feel to it. Jones has a chance to put the Lions ahead on the extra one, and he can. Chris Jones, 18 points tonight. He's been a monster man. And he's had to he's had to be the guy. Last night, you know, he just kind of stood back, didn't do too much, but you know, tonight shows up and he's showing out too. 41 to 40, fourth 58 left to go, fourth quarter. Firebirds ball. Knighton brings it up, working right to left, left wing. Knighton picks up his dribble and he yep. walks with the Dante Gibson down on the walk. And you knew that one was coming. They definitely did it. They did uh, have to travel on that possession and really. Uh, once again, the wheels starting to come off, and you're starting to see why this team is ranked high in 5A. But, you know, the Firebirds, I think they have one more run left in them. 4.40 left to go, fourth quarter. 41-40. Lions have a chance to extend their lead on this possession. Bailey takes it overhead, throw to Mine now in the left corner. Mine works it back up top to Gibson. Dante Gibson has been a good little reserve guard for the Lions here in this one. Bailey now takes it right wing ahead. Three. Now he swings it over to Mine, drives into the lane, a hip and a hop, and he passes it off to Bailey in the lane. Now up and under, and he can't get it, but Tyler Self is down on the ground, and he took a big hit. He took a little contact on that one because he was going down to the ground. It looks like he kind of landed on that uh, on a side a little bit. Um, this has been a uh, uh, in, in certain spurts of this game. This game has been very very physical. We saw that play with Mike Miller kind of being you know kind of, uh, everybody just kind of toppled to the ground a little bit. Khalil Bailey toes the line and misses the first one of two 
Got a chance to give his team now a two-point advantage. Remember, they were down by about, I believe, six at the yeah. beginning of this quarter. Yeah, they were they were, they were down six, and the Firebirds just could not close the uh, could, could not close the door on this team. 4-18 left to go. Bailey's second one is just short. And the Firebirds will come away with a rebound. And the Firebirds need a smart possession right here. You know, you don't need to rush anything. Indeed they do. Sean Knight makes the move, gets into the lane, trying to kick it back out to France. It'll be a turnover going the other way from the lines. And France, I mean, on that possession right there, he just kind of jumped, you know, it was just simple miscommunication right there. France really, if he just stays there, he has an open, high quality mid-range jumper, but just went the other way in the bat, in the pass went right behind him. And this one's starting to get intense. Lions need to put a couple points on the board. Take advantage these missed opportunities by the Firebirds. Now it'll be Gibson brings it up, working left to right, finds uh, Maine on the left wing. Maine takes it in, swings it out top to Gibson, now near side. Inside to Jones, makes a move, too strong, and air ball. 3.48 left to go. France brings it up, working right to left, going against Mines. France now takes it, picks up his dribble, kicks it out to Patterson, down low to Dabney, and he easily lays it in. Cameron Dabney now with nine. First point of the fourth quarter for Dabney. Gibson has it left wing, guarded by Knighton. Knighton has tried to get a couple of steals, and now Patterson almost tips it away. Jones up and under. Nice bucket, Chris Jones. <laughs> and he had to fight ever since he had gotten the ball in the post. And really, uh, that's what, that's something I really wanted to see out of him tonight. You know, just getting the ball in the post, and even though there's a little contact, don't get, you know, don't get too nervous and you know, start bobbling the ball around a little bit. Very good job. 20-point night now for Chris Jones. Now we have a foul. Let's see who they got. They got 25, yeah. and Gabe Patterson, his third personal foul of the day. That's, that's who I figured Fifth it was. team foul. That's who I figured it was. Um, he had been kind of getting a little physical, uh, really, especially on the on this offensive end or the defensive end, but um, they did catch him on the offensive end. Young Sun Company is a family-owned and operated business founded in 1978 by Gene Young. Whether indoor or outdoor signage, design or printing, Young Sign Company has been the staple of quality signage in eastern Kansas. Back to Nathan Varsity, one of Banner's printers. There's only one call to make. Check out Young Sign Company today. Now Green, entry pass down low to Jones. Jones quickly double team. Gets it back out top to Green on the entry pass. It's going to be thrown away by Knight. Why are you throwing that? <laughs> I mean, you have a quality possession. You don't need to do anything. And... And the Lions wow. come away on a tip. 43-42, to 42, Lions with the lead. They got to bring the ball off the floor right here. Yeah, wow. they do. Now a timeout by the Lions. As head <laughs> coach Rod Briggs noticed his team was being lackadaisical, bringing it across midcourt. I don't know. It looks like the Lions and the Firebirds are uh, wanting to test everybody's uh, heart pressure tonight and blood pressure tonight. <laughs> yeah, indeed they do. <laughs> Bill Self already got his blood pressure tested. I don't think he needs anymore. Well, and, and well, I think at this point right now, he can kind of watch his son play a little bit. He's just like... He, 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 yeah. can, <laughs> he, can, he can relax a little bit. He's got over a week until they play Davidson. Yeah, at the Sprint Center, I believe. Yeah. Hey, everybody, if you're going to trust the roof over your head, you need to trust your roofing company. The Christian Brothers Roofing Company, you get years of experience and integrity. Don't wait until you know there's a problem. Contact us for a complimentary 16-point roof and gutter inspection at Christian Brothers Roofing at 816-453-ROOF or at 453-ROOF.com. Once again, you're listening into this game on 810varsity.com. We appreciate you joining us tonight. Our score right now in the fourth quarter of play, 43-42, to 227 left to go, fourth quarter. My name is Aaron Berlin, joined alongside, as always, by Andrew Hammond on this chilly Saturday night. Yeah, but, you know, the action is heating up on the inside. Oh, did you mean to do that? Yeah, I did. You know, <laughs> you kind of set me up. It was kind of like an alley-oop. You just threw it up there. I just had to dunk it. <laughs> well, the Lions ball, 2.15 <laughs> left to go. One-point advantage for the Lions. Mine takes it. Left hand to dribble. Swings it up top to Young. Now to be left side now is Dante Gibson going against Knight. Young back up top. Lions really looking for a good shot, and that's what you need to do here in the later portions of the game. You can't yeah, cough up possession. Definitely. You just get good, crisp, clean, pa clean passes. Something they've been doing, you know, really on this position. I'm really um, impressed by this position. Taking some time off the clock, moving people around, tiring these Firebirds out on defense a little bit. you got to make the Firebirds defend as long as possible. Gibson going against Knott. Now they're almost up near midcourt. Hands it off, and I think we have a timeout 
head coach yeah. Briggs wanted another one. Yeah, and you know, really, that was just great. That was great defense by the Firebirds. No, there's no shame in that possession. But you know, I was impressed with Lansing. They had an opportunity to really attack the basket a little bit, but they kept everything moving along. And you know, with 1:35 left to go, you know. Once again, there is no shot clock in high school basketball, so I think they could definitely, I think they could definitely take you know a little more time off the clock. It, to be quite honest, whoa, we had uh, some cheerleaders fall down. But um, one of the things I definitely do right here is, um, if you can take that down to about 30 seconds or about a minute 30, you know, minute 35 right now, go down 35 seconds, get get some points out of it, then. You know, that clock is definitely going to go a lot faster for the Firebirds. Collision and repair, A and B car stars locations throughout the Kansas City metro area. Check us out online for the closet or for the closest location at yourcarstar.com or call the Riverside location for more information at 816-741-6966. A and B car star is proud to be the title sponsor of 810varsity.com and sponsor high school sports year-round throughout the metro area. A and B car star. 135 left to go, fourth quarter of play, 43 to 42 in favor of the Lions. And this one is. They've had not quite the fourth quarter, yeah. haven't they? <laughs> I was say, well, both teams have had quite the fourth quarter, and uh, I was going to say, I uh, didn't mean to interrupt you right there, but this thing is not over by a long shot. No, they were about left for dead. The Lions have really taken their time on this possession. Remember, they don't have to shoot if they don't want to. No shot clock in high school basketball. And they are going back to that 1 3 1. I'm surprised that they didn't uh, stay in that thing a little bit longer. Yeah, they're going to make the Lions shoot their next point. Instead of getting those easy inside points. Now to be mine with the left wing guarded by Dabney. Mine takes a couple of dribbles and will pass back out of it. Well, one thing I am impressed by right now, if they can just keep everything moving and force them to, to start moving um, on defense, you know, hey, you're fine. Dabney with those long arms is really trying to make the Lions guards work for it. We're under a minute now at 55 seconds. And this is where the Firebirds, yeah, they will have to get and. and they did a really smart thing right there. Getting out of that man-to-man -man once you hit it around a minute left. And now here comes Gibson. Left swing, left-handed dribble. Swings it all top to Young. Under 40 seconds left to go are the Lions. And we have a foul. Wow. And they got Logan Bannister with it. They're going to have to commit a foul at some point. Yeah. The Lions were content just to dribble out the clock. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I don't have any issue with the fact that they stay in that 1-3-1 one, one for about 30 seconds because you never know. You might have that one stupid pass that goes down the middle, hey, and you have three guys right there. You can easily get a two-on-one break. But, uh, you know, that was just a good quality possession by Lansing, playing very, very smart. Young takes a couple of dribbles, and this one's hard off the back iron. Rebound Firebirds. Under 40 seconds left to go. Firebirds need a point right here. Brett France will dribble it up, working right to left, going against mine, and we have a timeout. And this is where the drama comes in, the drama, the intrigue of high school basketball. Right now, if I'm the Firebirds, one thing I definitely want to do is you want to get a good shot. You want to get a quality shot. You have 30 seconds. And you have to get a quality shot. You want The shot puts them up by one. Yeah, I mean, just you don't want to force it. You, you, you don't want to get that because, I mean, even though a guy would be open, it might not be the best shot. And we've definitely seen that, um, especially with uh, with Isaiah Greed, who, you know, uh, loves the three ball for the for the Lions. But, you know, if they can get, if the uh, Firebirds can get a shot and, you know, maybe kind of wait, wait until about between seven and ten seconds, they can, uh, you know, definitely uh, make the Lions uh, try and earn a victory. Ball live brackets and watch games online at 810varsity.com, the new home for Kansas City High School Sports. If you like 810 Varsity now, everybody buckle your seatbelts as a new redesign is set to launch in a few weeks. Team and league pages, full sport coverage from football to soccer to wrestling, and of course, no one brings more games live online than 810varsity.com. Over 175 broadcasts in the fall and even more ahead this winter. Live or archive, watch the games online at 810varsity.com. The way this one's going out, this one could be an 810 Varsity Classic. We hey, why to, not? We might have to start a new webpage for all of our <laughs> classic games. 30 seconds left to go. Firebirds trail by one. 43 to 42. Firebirds have the ball in the possession area. You know what? I would put this. I would put the ball in either France hands or Knight in hands. And it's going to go to Knight. No, we got a and now ball Gibson loose. coughed it up. Gibson with it right hand the dribble guarded by Knight. I hit the floor to Green. He's fouled. Wow. 
Wow. Isaiah Green picked it up from Gibson, who almost lost it, and went in for two, and the Lions fans are very happy. And that was just a complete, I mean, no, there's, there's no problem with that offensive possession. That was just great defense. I mean, it, it, tr in true Honey Badger form, he took what he wanted. He's first run <laughs> up and through, and you can hear the excitement. Greeno with six points in the fourth quarter alone. He's made his mark here in the last eight minutes. For his second one, Benzanese up and over. Picks the Sinecker, but falls in. He's got seven. 45-42, wow. to 42, one possession game. And but it's a big one. they got to hit a three if they well, want to get a yeah. win. And, and, and once again, you don't have to hit the three right away. You can take some time on this possession. Uh, you know, you, you want to look for a good shot, but it doesn't have to be the first opportunity. No, you don't. Firebirds with a big talk right now as head coach Chuck Law calls a timeout. And Remember, his team was 2-0 and coming into this game. The Lions were 3 and, and And they're coming off back-to-back -back games. Yeah, and Tyler Self, that's, that's the guy I go to right now. He's been hitting the three ball all game long. I, you know what? I, I wonder if, if we had time just to you know, bring Bill Self over here. Huh, Bill, what, what would you do in this situation? <laughs> Tyler Self is the only one to sink a three-pointer for the Firebirds, so you got to get him coming off the yeah. screen or something. Maybe in this type of situation, maybe... I'm sure Bill Self knows a nice play you can call <laughs> yeah. up. He won a national championship with one. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, but only they don't have Mario Chalmers uh, to take the three. And, and we go to KU, so we aren't reminded of, of that <laughs> play anytime anybody talks about a three-pointer. No, you, ne you, ne you never forget about it. <laughs> Mario's miracle. miracle. Well, maybe they need Self's miracle right now. Why not? He will be inbounding the ball right here. It looks like they will be bring some ball pressure. The good thing is they have ample enough time. 23.3 seconds left to go. Self will inbound it. You can even go for a quick two and get a foul yeah. and hope that they miss it. And they have not been as solid on the free throw line as they have been all day. Inbounds to go to Dabby and they'll hand it off to Knight. Going against Gibson. Gibson the sophomore. Knight in between the legs gets a screen and now there's a foul wait, on the play. Wait, wait. He got a foul. Wow. And maybe that's something yeah. the Lions thought they wanted to do. They had uh, a foul to give. I understand, but in that situation, I, I mean, you're up three. I... They got Gibson it's on the not, foul. It, but it's not like you have to put him on the line. No, you don't. But if you put him on the line, now, 15, uh, yeah. two seconds left to go. So now you have to put up a three in that situation. Knighton takes the inbound backcourt, guarded by Gibson. Between the legs is Knighton. He almost popped it up again, and Gibson fouled him again. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the play right there. But uh, in, in that situation, if yeah, if, if you do have six fouls, go ahead and foul him. But with five, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I would just let them play that possession out. You know, let your defense, who's played excellent so far, let them, you know, win the game for you. Don't try and force them to the line. Two big free throws right now for Sean Knight. 10.8 seconds left to go. The Lansing Faithful is starting to make some noise. Knight looks back, and he's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> 45 to 42. Knight first one of the one and one on its way. Rims in and out. Rebound Lansing underneath. Jones came up with it, and Grease quickly fouled. In this Maybe game, that was the strategy. Put them yeah. on the line and make them make their shots. I com completely understand right there. I mean, I wouldn't have gone with that. I would have let my defense uh, my defense win that. But, hey, the plan work has worked so far. I, I shouldn't say that it's worked, that it's worked to perfection. But uh, with about 8.9 8 seconds left. We will tow the line. Miss. This is the front end of the one and one. Here comes South. Yeah. ahead the form. We have a timeout. In, in this situation right here, you have to – and with the fact that it, that Lansing has fouled on the previous possession, you got to put it up. You, you got to put up the first opportunity you have. Indeed, you do. Because you never know. You might get three. You, you know, you might get you know three foul shots. Just make sure that guy can shoot some free throws. Yeah, you're gonna have to make sure. 45 to 42, and you got to think the Lions will come back with the same strategy. Put them on the line, make them make their free throws, and then worst comes to worst. Yeah, you get the ball back. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing there. – there is nothing wrong. There's no shame in that. Um, but if I – if if I'm Lawrence Free State, the first thing I do, if I get an opportunity to put up a three, I, you have to take it. Remember, the Lions are coming off back-to-back -back games they played last night on the road as well at Topeka Seaman. And then you – 
I don't know. They probably should have stayed in a hotel somewhere. <laughs> they were coming right back out this way, but I doubt they did. It's not that far out. I was going to say, uh, eight games uh, each. Well, like, like, like some teams do in the Pac-10 when they're playing, you know, Cal and Stanford or even, you know, the Washington or Oregon schools. It's just that one-day trip. You just go to the next site. I don't think they did that. I don't think they did high either. School, high school ball is not that hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe they took in the KU Ohio State game today. Yeah, maybe, you know what? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe South gave him some tickets today. Uh, I, mean. I don't think he'd give the opposing. <laughs> 8.3 seconds left to go. Firebird ball. 45 to 42. Isaiah Gree had a chance to ice this one to miss the front end of a one and one. And nobody's going to be guarding the inbound. This time. Now, uh, Knighton takes it in his foul. Gibson fouled him once again. So that's the strategy. Yeah. Right. Second point three ticked off. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a different type of cat. I, I, I'd like, I like to see my defense, you know, kind of make, make a stand right here. I understand putting them at the line, but I don't know. <laughs> Knighton goes to the line. The 5'9 senior takes a couple of dribbles, bends the knees, holds it in his hand, puts the first one up, nothing, puts the bottom of the net. And right here, to be quite honest with you, I would definitely try and make this one, even though some people say, hey, you miss it. You know, if he, make, if he makes it, it's a, it's a one-point game. Jones and Miller, the two down low for the Lions. Knight and second one on its way, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think 45 to 44 is seven seconds left to go. Now I think if you're head coach Chuck Law, you put one of the Lions on the line because they've had trouble making their free throws yeah, as well. I mean, it was, and that's what, that's what I'm saying. I mean, in that situation, yeah, you're down to, you know, some people say, oh, well, you put the, you know, miss it intentionally. No. In that situation, I would rather have them at the line down one than have them at the line down two. Because guess what? One shot, right now, this is a one possession, it's going to be a one possession ball game either way. So if you can force them to, uh, if, if you can, you know, get them to the line, they make one of them. They make two of them because they're going to be in the bonus anyway. So they're going to have two cracks at it. The worst you can do is a three-pointer. And if I'm Lansing, I don't do this, but I'd probably foul them again. The Firebirds out of the Sunflower League, they play teams like Shawnee Mission South, Shawnee Mission North, Shawnee Mission Northwest, Olathe the East, Olathe the West, Olathe the Northwest. Battle tested. Lawrence High School. <laughs> they play higher quality opponents. The Lions out of the call Valley League play teams like Piper. And now Agree takes it on the inbounds, and he's quickly fouled. But they play teams like Piper, Baser Linwood, yeah. Bonner Spring, much smaller schools. And to come in here and put up a fight like this has been tremendous. And, and one of the top conferences, you could say maybe top three conferences in the state of Kansas. Indeed. Gree will toe the line. Remember the last time out, he missed his one and one free throw. He's going to have a chance at two. Gree's first one on its way. No. Nope. And he missed it. And that takes the foul out of the equation. Now, yeah. Tyler Self will check back in. Remember, he can shoot the long ball. He's the only one for the Firebirds to make a three on the ninth. And six seconds is plenty of time. But if I'm if, if I'm Lansing, I put guys on the line right now. Because you never know. Breeze misses last two. And this one tickles the twine and through. 6.3 seconds left to go. France brings it up, working right to left against mine. Finds self in the corner. Three on its way. No, hits off the back iron. Another one by Knighton. 15-footer. And what, no. what? And he missed it, and let's see if they called a foul. Oh, they no. might have called a foul on Knighton's collision down low. No, they didn't. The refs are leaving. This one's over. And this one's over. Lansing comes away oh, with a two-point <laughs> victory over their Sunflower League opponent, the Firebirds, a 46-44 to 44 point win. Woo! Tyler Self <laughs> had a chance to submit it with a three-pointer on its way. He was fading away to his left. Couldn't quite get it quite on tack, though, and that's what you got to do. you got to get guys that are spot-up shooters, and you have yeah. to confuse them. And that's oh, what they man. did. They applied good pressure all the way through. That was a thriller, I got to tell you. I mean, even self-shot, I mean, once he put it up, the shot, you know, it, it, it was on target. It's not like, you know, he just kind of threw it at the rim and just hoped and prayed. The ball was on target, but, you know, just hit the back iron and out. Lansing goes two for two on their weekend swing. They pick up wins against Topeka Seaman and a big win against Florence Free State. That was the a fun Seaman, one. <laughs> the Seaman one wasn't the big one. They were 0-3 yeah. on the year, but tonight yeah. was the big one they get. And they get a win against a quality opponent like they did tonight. That says a lot. That was one heck of a – and really uh, two uh, very loud atmospheres 
this one picked up a little bit near the end, but uh, this one was this one. I got to tell you, this one was probably one of the best games early on in the uh, in the state of Kansas this year in all of uh, the basketball. Indeed, it was a 46 to 44 win goes to the Lansing Lions. They improved to 4 and 0 on the year. They're certainly battle tested. They're going to get into Cal Valley League play here soon, though, as they already have one win over a Cal Valley League opponent in Bishop Ward that they got earlier in the year. Yeah. Hey, everybody, just a reminder before we wrap things up tonight, you can follow brackets and watch games online at 810varsity.com, the new home for Kansas City High School Sports. If you like 810 Varsity now, buckle your seatbelts. There's a new redesign. It's set to launch in a few weeks. Team and league pages, full sport coverage from football to soccer to wrestling. And, of course, no one brings more sports games live online than 810varsity.com. Over 175 broadcasts in the fall and even more ahead this winter. Hiver Archive, watch the games online at 810varsity.com. Well, that does it for us here tonight. Lions a winner, 46-44. to 44. Special thanks to Eric Armstrong, our cameraman here tonight, and for my color commentator tonight, Andrew Hammond. My name's Aaron Berlin. We say goodnight here from Lawrence Free State High School. Lions a winner, 46-44. to 44. Good night, everybody. <laughs>